Hi, everyone. Welcome to another amazing topic of conversations. Thank you to our sponsors, the Health Channel. So please go to their website and sign up for everything related to health. And if you require any office space or virtual offices, Alexa's workspaces will totally get you anything you need. And we welcome Aventura Moms, um, and it goes beyond Aventura, where all your resource group. You can text, and you will immediately find any resource that you need. From the power of the heels, we're going live again. Re-energized, reimagined, and refocused the second Thursday of every month at the AC Hotel. It's amazing conversation and we learn from each other and help each other. So from the power of the heels, we hope to see you on our next one. Welcome, Suli, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me here. It's my, really, I'm humbled and it's my honor. So Suli is the founder of Crown Energy Coaching. And it's a very, we're going to have a very different conversation because it's about humanizing life. And what is humanizing life? So what do you mean when you talk about humanizing life? Well, you know, it's a great question, number one. <laughs> and it's a multifaceted questions and answer. Many people are facing really the transitions and going through major changes, uncertainties, post COVID, new era, transition, new paradigm, and so much imbalance and uncertainty in life, not only with their family themselves, politics, work, unemployment, climate disasters and wars around the world. So people are really um, pressing to have some stability and seeking opportunities to move forward and also in the process develop resilience. You see, as a coach, I um, found my purpose. I faced many uh, personal health, thank God I'm well, family issues, taking care of two parents with Alzheimer's and very, also very advanced age. Yes. I mean, it was going through the process and business challenges because after 22 years of a successful business, I had to make a choice. Do I take care of my parents or do I inter travel international for my own company? So having faced all these, and during the process of going through these challenges, I develop, I study, I train, I got certified in many modalities, not only with my business background, but that really brought purpose to a process, to life. So humanizing means putting the seven influencers that I call influencers. There are the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the physical, the cultural, the social, and the environmental aspects that influences everybody on their daily lives, whether they realize this or not. So one thing that I know is that people are greater than they think they are. And they are more powerful than they think they are. We put ourselves down. And I've heard this over and over and over. Because especially it's that women. limiting belief. That limiting, especially women. Especially women. And I understand that today I read uh, an article that said that women are very good negotiators for others, but not for themselves. 
So if they're negotiating like a, a contract, they will do very well with negotiating for others. But, when, but if it's the same contract and it's for themselves, they just accept what it's offered. So why do we put ourselves down so much? Well, look, I was negotiating contracts in 22 countries. So I can really relate to that. And when it comes to negotiating your own contract, it's a limiting belief. It's a fear of losing that contract for yourself because it's a limiting yeah. belief. That was that depends on the generation, huh? Correct. And that, that you're not capable of doing so that you fear of going a little you fear down. losing the opportunity because women and it's also generational. My generation, as well as yours, and even um, but not the millennials so much. No, the no. women of the millennials are different, but our generation, so I would say not all women, but it's in our generation, we were not brought up culturally, depending what culture you're in, that the woman was there to support and have more of a passive role than the one going out. Even the women that were in business, when it came to the personal life, it's ingrained in you. And I bring those things up when we talk about the different energetic or the high how you develop your high consciousness within yourself because it's things that you carry on as baggage that you don't need anymore and how to release it. What do we carry on our cells? It's energy, right? We carry our cells, go back to now what scientists said, uh, maybe uh, an article that I read um, not even a month ago, that they are tracing and it's by a Japanese uh, a Japanese scientist that is tracing our background up coming from stardust, which is an amazing thing. But the study I'm referring to, it's about cells that they always said that we carried up to seven generations. Well, it goes much more than that. So we are, our cells, when we are born, are pre-programmed with information on them. And sometimes... It's you're carrying things that are not your own. And that's a very deep dive in a very short period. Well, of, now of I've information. heard more and more about releasing your baggage that it's really not your own. Correct. Yep. And you have to know where is where is that? So to release it, you have to uncover it and work with a process. Isn't and that just saying? It's a process. Yeah, correct. It's a process. And you're not, you're the first one that I've heard that introduces the influencers, the culture, because it's never introduced and it has a lot of meaning. Absolutely. So on all our background, each one has their own different background, their own different way of doing things based not only on how they were raised, but based on where and how. That's correct. So when I call myself a core coach, a multi-level, multi-dimensional coach, it's because in every aspect of your life, you can just look at each one of these influences and know through exercise, through filling out some thought process provoking matters within yourself to know that, oh, wow, do you really want this? Do you want it? Are you ready to let it go? Do you need it? And questions that will release what is holding you back in any way. And it's not about, you know, a lot of people uh, go after the money carrot. But life, when you put all these ingredients around it, money is not your fake shiny uh, fix it all because mainly because a lot of many health, I mean, very wealthy, successful people are very unhappy 
And also many commit suicide when being at the top of their game. But I think that new generation is starting to realize that. That money is not everything and now it's a more balanced work life. And they, they are suffering because they are themselves not found their own stability. So it's a process they are going through, but I totally agree with you that they are already, um, how can I say, armed for a better sense with a greater awareness of what's important in life than perhaps other generations. Correct. They are less stuck with the material sides of it. For example, um, there's a decline in the in the millennium. So if they get, first of all, they don't want to do, they're not committing as much as we did, that I think it's also generational and cultural. So they're not getting married as much. They just want to live together, travel and live. They don't want to be stuck like with a house. And for us, it was... Our house what we wanted. <laughs> what we wanted, correct. It was our security. And and this generation, they don't care. Yeah, but there is something in there. They have a they have several I identified it's kind of several um disconnects. They are I, I named them min, minimalizers. They like to minimalize My everything. Slide. Yeah. But they are the biggest spenders. They go after the money. Okay. So they... So in one sense, yes. they, they are more balanced. They're more, they are more, they're humanizing their life a little more. But on the other hand, they're more materialistic because they want a good life. And it's not so much materialistic, but they, they, they want the money and the luxury of having the money to do whatever they want to do without having things. So it's about, and what I do applies across the border, really, because it empowers, energizes to have clarity and establish a vision that gives purpose in the success with growth and more important, sustainability. Because whatever you're going to do, you're going to learn a process that you can carry on. So uh, this process and training is not only for individuals, but it also applies to leaders and companies. And it's about allowing the out-of-the-box process to generate the return on your investments, whether it's your personal investment, your family, your friends, your growth, it's really applies to what you really want in your life with joy. Because when you, when you lack contentment, you don't have work. You, if you're not happy, how can you show up happy at work? If Correct. you're going through things, how can you be the best you can? How can you face an interview for a new job when your energy level, if you go one to seven as a measurement on a gauge, your energy level is a one. And it's science. And you are emitting of, energy. And you're thinking about the problems that you have. How can you literally clear them so that you can go to an interview and move ahead. And because look, if you are depressed, you your energy level cannot be hidden because it's energy, it travels. You are emitting that without having the consciousness that that's happening. When you are happy and things okay. are going wow. well, you're going to be attracting people on the same energy field, if I may say. It's physics. So it's like, think of a you have an AM radio and you have an FM radio. If you want to reach 
an FM, FM radio. If you want to go for a job up here, you cannot be vibrating here. So you're talking about parallel lines. So AM radio, it's a low frequency or lower frequency, but you still can be happy if that's what you want. But if you are vibrating at the AM frequency, you cannot reach the FM frequency. And so that I goes for everything in life. The FM frequency. Pardon? How do we get to the FM frequency? Oh, that's when you put into action the seven levels of energy leadership. And it's an easy process because you start to identify your action, your thoughts. It begins with your thoughts, your emotions, and then your actions. So that is a process. And um, I also became a master practitioner in, in doing assessments on your energy levels. So it's, it's not that complicated. It's amazing that it's so simple, yet once you learn, you are able to identify, oh, I am, I am in a victim mode. My emotions are, I'm disconnected from what I really want. And, and then you move up to the next level. To the, and getting to be on level one, which is the lowest, and getting yourself up to level six, it's a matter of identifying and having that ability of awareness. And you can change. It, all of us will fluctuate all, us. all day long. You get angry, you get happy, you get angry, you get upset, you get this. But the difference is how much do you stay on the low level? And with the stress level that we are in, I remember when I did the test years ago, when my parents had to go into memory care at that point, could not manage them anymore. And I took the test. It's not a test. Let me rephrase that. It's a very fun, easy, 40 minutes assessment, okay? It's not about personality. It's not about psychological. It's about where you are today, where your energy is. It's an amazing process called Eli. And uh, anyway, my I was a level five, but my stress level was on one at about 40%. So the rest of my time, I'm on level five. I'm giving, I'm, you know, compassionate. I am, you know, is executing. But when you're level, when you're 40% on stress level, it means you have to do something about it. I coached an executive, okay, who was level six, almost level seven, but he spent all most of his day at level 60 percent so how do you manage that well it's a process or how do you yeah it's a process of balancing like going yes it's about it's about awareness of where you are and what you can do to change even at the worst situation it, you have the power because only you know what's best for you and only you know how to improve yourself. Well, talk to me about the people in transition. In, I'm sorry? In transition. The well, people that really, especially women, that are afraid of letting go a stable job or those women that are over 50 that are too young to retire but and lost their job and lost their job and really want to go in transition and they're young because now I know. You know, the first... is the old 30s yeah you're absolutely right and and that's reality isn't it so how do you deal with that it depends each individual is different that's why the seven different levels of influencers also relates to the seven different levels of energy. So assessing each person, there is a big difference on what you want and what you need. Think about that. Correct. And that we big need what we want 
or do we really want what we need? Exactly. So finding the, the missing link between what you want and what you need and what you need and what you want and addressing the fears, the limiting beliefs, the gaps, what's holding you back, what are you afraid of? And for these women and men going through the same thing, okay? And even kids that are graduating college with a master and no practical experience that are going through transition finding in others who got jobs, but guess what? They're not ready to take on the job that they took. So how do you get to find your balance? It's really about you establishing and finding out, look, there was a lady who was on her 60s she had the same job for 30 years. She was let go all of a sudden. And she kept saying, I always wanted to cook. I always wanted to be a cook. And I asked her, what's stopping you? Well, I had kids. I had to get a job. My husband had a job. I never had, I, you know, you just get used to the comfort zone of doing the same thing over and over. And I said, is that part of your real, is still part of your dream? And she said, yes. And she says, but I'm afraid we count with my money. I said, I believe. And I went with her through a process where she discovered that purpose, passion, Purpose plus passion equals success. So no matter what it is, if you have the passion and that's your purpose in a matter of time, look at the story of uh, B Bert's B, the woman. Do you know the story of the woman on Bert, Bert's B? She left her husband with two kids and she was walking on a road. And this man was selling um, the honey from his farm. And she wanted to, she picked up the honey and to give to her kids for nourishment. And they started talking. She says, you know, if you package this differently and if you do that and if you do this, and, and he says, where do you live? And she started crying because she had nowhere to go. She had just left her home with two kids. An abusive husband or relationship, I, I don't remember the whole story. The bottom line is, she went to work for him. He gave her a place to stay with the kids. He, she went to work for him. They fell in love. They married and Bert's B started to grow. So you see, not having the, if she had had the fear, she lived in that fear, limiting belief that she had to stay in, in whatever situation she was in. She would have never found the success, love, respect, and the children were not. So women in transition, men in transition, young people, you know what? Let's go within. That's part of humanizing. It's part of going within and knowing yourself better. Because having awareness within your own self, you start, you empower yourself, you re revisit your beliefs, you get, you remove what's hidden on your subconscious that is preventing you to move forward and you hadn't seen, no one does, until peeling the onion, just bring it up and you release it and you become a new person. And it's a process. Everybody has their ha ha moment at a different time. Correct. But I have my last question before we go. And it, we're talking about humanizing. We're talking about the process. We're talking about things of what we want versus what we need. 
And now we're in the middle of a technology revolution with artificial intelligence. Oh, we, I'm so happy you asking that question. Because it's <laughs> like, now we don't even need to think. We just type, look for this, and a whole answer is being brought to us. So we don't even think anymore. Well. So how do we, what's your take on on the artificial intelligence and I I totally AI. agree the AI is really good in certain things, but how do we right. listen? Let me start oh. with this. Let me start with this. Einstein said back in the days, I fear the day when the technology overlaps our humanity. The world will only have a generation of idiots. <laughs> that's yes. Einstein. That's, okay, but that's exactly what I described. Because yes. you don't so, think anymore. Okay, so let me tell you. Number one, I will tell you why developing conscious awareness is very important. But when you're talking about AI, if you learn one thing or if you, you, you take away from all we talked about today is and when you have AI, you put the I before the A. And that's where the importance of a consciousness awareness becomes essential. Because if you don't have your inner self knowledge and you don't step onto your own power, it's going to be very hard to use discernment on when, what, how to allow, allow and choose AI to improve humanity. So the, the conscious awareness requests, requires also the heart and mind connection that increases the ability of discernment. So when you work with, with energy, which is science, not philosophy, and you work with the, the, these important human ability, human ability that are unused, you have the power of discernment. So, yeah, it's a new perspective to develop your own self to uncover the missing links because it will improve your life and also give you the ability to discern what is positive energy and what is negative energy. And if you allow, if you blindly take over, for example, you gave a good example. Before you used to go into the, I'm going to date myself because my mom had it, Encyclopedia Britannica and do research and go look on books and read all this. But now imagine we have, I think it's a great thing that if you search something in Google is to improve your knowledge, not to make you lazy or, or, uh, you know, to increase. Yes, but, but it, it, you have a good point. We're improving our knowledge. But for example, the latest AI uh, chat GPT, where you just type, write me a paper on this, this, and this, and the whole paper comes in. It doesn't even let you think on what you want to express, or it doesn't even let you become a critical thinker so that you can solve many problems later in life. That's and why that's, the, where that's I why agree with Einstein. That, but that's why the the you must improve your inner self. If you don't reconnect within you, you are not going to be able to reconnect with others, respect others, balance with nature. So you have to reconnect with with, with yourself and know 
within yourself and your power. Recognize the needs of our others. Re-energize your life and work. It's not by copying a paper. That's the part of the generation today. And that's why they're not really so smart. they outsmarting their ability to be smart. Correct. You just said it. They are outsmarting their ability to be smart. But what's your website for anyone that wants to reach out to you? Okay. If you want to integrate, you can... And if you want to talk, I can I offer a discovery call and you're welcome to do that. Go to my website, www.crownenergycoaching.com. And my email is Suli, S-U-E-L-Y, at Crown. C-R-O-W-E, C-R-O-W-N-E, coaching.com. So even if you spell crownenergycoaching.com, I get the email. But Absolutely. Thank you. We're out of time. I could stay here discussing the whole AI and the whole energy, but we're out of time. And I really appreciate you being with us and everybody else. Stay Thank safe you. above all, and until next week, have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thank you.